Good evening. I'm uh, Robert Silvers, editor of the New York Review of Books. I'm I'm very glad to welcome you to this uh, symposium on the economic crisis. It's jointly sponsored uh, by the Penn World Voices and the New York Review. Now, most of our distinguished symposiasts have written very widely, sometimes in the New York Review, and I'm going to very quickly introduce them alphabetically. Now, first, Bill Bradley. He served as U.S. Senator from New Jersey, 1979 to 1997. 2000, he ran in the presidential primaries against Al Gore. He's now managing director of the Merchant Bank, <coughs> Allen and Company. He's written five books, the most recent being The New American Story. It's a call for increased citizen involvement in the political process. Uh, next, Neil Ferguson. He's currently Lawrence Tisch Professor of History at Harvard. He's, well, he's also William Ziegler Professor of Business Administration at Harvard Business School. Since 1995, <clears throat> he's published 10 books on political and economic history, a famous book on the history of the Rothschild Bank, among other things. His latest book is The Ascent of Money, history of the evolution of credit, stock market, insurance around the world. Then we have Paul Krugman. We all know his column in the New York Times. He's also a professor of economics and international affairs at Princeton, a centenary professor at the London School of Economics. He's written widely known books uh, on economics and, and a uh, a standard work on international economics, the theory and policy. He did that with Morris Obsfield. Now, his most recent book is The Return of Depression Economics and the Crisis of 2008. Last year, he won the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics. Now, our moderator uh, is Jeff Madrick. He's a frequent contributor to the New York Review. He's editor of Challenge Magazine. He's visiting professor at Cooper Union. He's senior fellow at the Schwartz Center for Economic Policy at the New School. His most recent book is The Case for Big Government. It was published last October. He's writing a history of the US economy since 1970. Then we have Nouriel Roubini. Distinguished Professor of Economics at NYU's Stern School of Business, prominent commentator on the economic crisis since he first began predicting it would happen in 2004. <laughs> A former advisor of the US Treasury Department, former member of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. He now has his own consultancy firm uh, RGE Monitor, which runs what has been described by The Economist as the number one economics website in the world. Now, he's often called in the press Dr. Doom. He, is, he has said no, he's Dr. Realist. Then we have uh, George Soros, he's chairman of both the Soros Fund and the Open Society Institute, which is one of the world's most active and imaginative organizations for promoting human rights. He first appeared in the New York Review in 1974, and investment and philosophy have long been combined in his work, as in his most recent book, The New Paradigm for Financial Markets, The Credit Crisis of 2008, and What It Means. John Cassidy, reviewing that book, suggested it would be foolhardy to bet against him, a prediction that's been proven true, as he both forecast much of what's happened since and made more than a billion dollars in the last year. <laughs> finally, finally, Robin Wells, researcher in economics, at Princeton, she's taught economics at the University of Michigan, at Stanford University, at MIT, 
She's the co-author with Paul Krugman of Economics. She's published widely in academic journals as well as in the New York Review. So thanks to you all for participating. And now, over to you, Jeff Madrick. Thank you. Th thank you all for coming. We have uh, a, an awesome task here. We have six highly distinguished panelists and something less than 90 minutes to solve the world's problems. Six months ago, it was six months ago now that the Lehman debacle occurred, that AIG was rescued, that Bank of America bought Merrill Lynch. <clears throat> About six months ago that the TARP funds started being distributed. Only on Monday are we going to find out what's really on the bank balance sheets. This frightens me. We've been operating, it seems to me, with so little information. The, uh, the so-called stress tests will be out. I think it says something about the way government has managed this economy. The economy was doing fairly poorly in much of 2008 and then fell off a cliff in the last quarter of 2008 and into 2009, growing falling at a 6% annual rate, an extraordinary drop in our national income. It is now, by some very important measures, the worst economic recession in post-World War II, the post-World War II era. Employment has dropped faster than ever before in this space of time. Industrial production, and by many other criteria, it's almost the worst, and it isn't over yet. The one last thing I want to say, what gives us all the jitters is that this is a three-front problem. A housing market that went crazy and the bubble burst, a credit crisis, the most severe we've known since the early 1930s, and now a sharp drop in demand for goods and services and capital investment leading to a severe recession. What gives us the jitters is that all of these are related and can make all those other factors worse. I'm not going to talk anymore because we want to hear what our panelists have to say. My job is to try to keep us to time. I've asked each of them to comment in the first six or seven minutes in their introductory remarks on what the current state of the economy is. Many people are saying they're green shoots. We have seen some deceleration in the decline of the economy. Green shoots are showing. What is the actual state of the economy? And do we need a serious mid-course correction on the part of the government? Do we have to change policy and what we should do? All of that in six or seven minutes for each of us. Let's go immediately to Senator Bradley. And again, I will try and keep us on time. Senator. Uh, thanks very much, Jeff. It's an honor for me to be on this panel. I look around at distinguished uh, historians and economists and financiers and wonder what I'm doing here. Uh, but I assume that um, I'm here because I think that any solution to the problem, certainly even defining the problem that we're facing, has to be able to be defined so the average guy understands and the solution to the problem has to be given so that the slightly above average guy understands. So uh, how are we along the recovery? I mean, when Citicorp drops from 60 to one and then comes back to three, I don't think that's a recovery. When Warren Buffett buys GE and uh, Goldman Sachs and after he buys it, it drops 45 to 50%, and that if he's going to even break even, he's got to earn 9% for the next 12 years, I don't think that's a recovery. Um, if you look at uh, what we should do about this, um, on the one hand, the administration has put in place uh, measures that, if they were to work, could offer some hope. What I'd like to suggest is if they don't work, there's an alternative. And I'd like to put it uh, this way. You know, we have um, essentially spent uh, about $12.7 trillion in commitments and actually spent a little over $4 trillion in this crisis. Some institutions, such as Citicorp, for example, uh, received about $60 billion in direct assistance and $340 billion in guarantees. So the U.S.